Hey everyone, Sam here, and in this video, I want to show you how Chris Cannon achieved this frosted glass effect with lots of animations inside of After Effects. Let's get started. Okay, so heading into After Effects, we've got our comp, and I've added a rounded rectangle and gave it a whitish fill. And I've added the simple circles just dropping down, uh, passing behind the window pane, as you can see. So pretty simple stuff, just changing their position. And once you have that done, you need to duplicate your window pane, the amount of times uh, you have circles. So this is gonna be our, our base window pane. It's gonna stay solid, solid color. Um, and yeah, we're gonna duplicate it three times because I've got purple, red, and blue. So one, two, three. And I'm just gonna lock out that layer. <clears throat> and the technique behind the frosted glass, def glass effect, sorry, is using radi radial gradients so we can delete the fill on these window panes because we don't need them and we're going to add a gradient fill inside the rectangle and we're gonna make it a radial gradient so there we go I'm actually gonna delete them and then duplicate them afterwards so we don't have to do it all over again and I'm going to edit the gradient and at the last color stop I'm going to set it to whitish color again DA 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 and then the first color stop of your gradient needs to be the color of the circle so let's grab the red color I used I'm going to copy that and then the first color stop is going to be that red so as you can see it's sort of coming together already and if you add another stop around uh, about yeah 70 70 percent and then just make it um yeah just make it a bit off red so that you've got an even more uh frosted glass effect there we go something like that looks pretty good i think so we've got the radial effect. Uh, but how do we sort of track the motion of the circle passing behind it? Well, I'm glad you asked because in After Effects, we can keyframe and animate the start and end point of our gradient. So we can actually move the position of this. And this is how Chris Cannon achieved this effect is by animating the start and end point of the radial gradient. So to start off, I'm going to just check out the keyframes of my red circle. So it starts about there. And then I'm going to move the start and end point up into the left top left corner. So let's go there and move it up. and get it about about there I think and I'm gonna keyframe and let's just unfold that and this can be a little bit tricky trying to get it tracking um, the correct way so I'm gonna start when it leaves the frosted pane so it's about there and so we want it all the way down and about the right size as well. So about something like that. You can make it bigger, you can make it, as you can see, you can make it, um, yeah, a lot bigger, a lot smaller. I'm gonna try and keep it about the same size. It's not too much of a worry. And then it just needs to come down a bit. 
I think. There you go. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, and then I'm going to actually duplicate this. And so when it goes out of frame, uh, we won't see it anymore. OK, actually, that's fine. And then that's sort of tracking all right. Um, and then we sort of want to see it here, next frame here. So I'm going to crop it there. And OK, so our starting, as you can see, the shape of the gradient isn't matching up to the circle very well. It is at the end, but not the beginning. So I'm going to make it um, a lot larger, I think, just so it can sort of cover it a bit easier. So there we go. And hmm, uh, it needs to come up a bit. Okay. It's nearly there. At the end, it's pretty good. Um, just needs a bit of tweaking. Does that work? Okay, so, okay, I need to change the X value rather than the Y. That bring it up. Okay, that's a bit much. But yeah, as you can see, it just takes a little bit of touching up. Um, and yeah, you'll get there in the end, I think. Hmm, something like that. That's not too bad. How's that play out? Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I'm thinking, what's that X? I think maybe I'm gonna copy over the X values here. Ah, that's really good, yeah. Okay, that might be the, the technique to go to. Start off in the middle, configure the size and then just move the Y of the start and the end up, but leave the X. And uh, yeah, that's pretty decent to be honest. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's just add some easing, see how that goes. It might not be great. Maybe I can remove the middle so it doesn't sort of, dumb, yeah. What's it look like without? Yeah, I think it was better off without to be honest. That's the then maybe remove the middle frames. It's a bit slow. I think maybe I need to keep the same X values on the start and end. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, let's try that now. And then just keyframe. Yeah, there we go. Actually, no. <laughs> that's not, uh, that's looking a bit weird. Uh, I think, to be honest, without, yeah, without the easy, it's looking fine. So I'm gonna keep that as is. I'm going to duplicate it because then we've got to animate the blue circle. So I'm just going to drag that down and it makes its contact about here. So let's grab this and I'm going to need to edit the fill. So let's just grab the blue head up here and paste it in and that's a pretty nice gradient but doesn't really match so I'm gonna lighten it up a bit and bring over the X. So 
center it about here. Maybe a bit more. And then we need to sort of blow it up on the Y. So something like that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. There we go. And then let's uh, grab the, sorry, let's grab the X values, minus seven. And they're working, yep. And minus five. There we go. How's that? Yep. And then let's just grab the start and paste it here and then see how, yeah, how that works. So there we go, something like that. Remove these ones. Oof, what is happening here? Ah. Okay, so I fiddled around with the values a bit and I've got the blue frosted glass effect working. And so now we can move on to the last circle, uh, the purple one. It's gonna be the same, um, same way we've done it before. So we're sort of used to it now, just animating the radial gradient. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so I've managed to sort of crack this one pretty quickly. Um, basically what I did was just set it up as I liked um, here with like the amount of circle uh, passing through. Um, but as you can see the, I think that's the end point. Oh no, it's the start point. Okay, so I've actually mapped the start point to the center of the circle and then tried and kept it that way uh, throughout the whole animation. I know this is pretty big, but I don't really mind it zooming on that much. And so I animate, I keyframed it here and then just you go to the frame where it leaves the window pane and then map the start point sort of to the center and then you just adjust the end point to get it as big or small you want. And then that should pretty much leave you with a good result pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, just perhaps keep that in mind if you're animating it. Um, and it tracks pretty well. So there we go. Let's have a look. Red, blue, and purple. I don't like the glass uh, flickering like that. So I might just grab the first pane and then uh, go into here, go to the last color stop, put it the same as the base pane. Yeah, that's okay, that's working a lot better. So let's just do that for the rest of them. And this animation will be on Lottie files. And I'll leave the After Effects project so you can see quickly how it was done. But yeah, that is how you recreate the frosted glass effect inside of Lottie Animations. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the SV Genius YouTube channel to keep up to date with everything happening in the wonderful world of Lottie Animations.